patient chose it to make their lives better. The infection doesn't kill the patient, but the infection will permanently damage the penis. The complication happens, well, it really, you know, makes the patient and the surgeon really feel really, really hard and bad. Hello, uh, I'm Sean Sung-won Park from South Korea. I'm practicing in Seoul. My specialty is uh, penile prosthetic surgery, especially inflatable ones. Penile prosthetic surgery, uh, when you talk about the surgical result, infection rate is a critical point. Low infection rate is one of the most important thing because when the infection happens, you cannot really treat it medically and low infection rate is uh, something we all prosthetic surgeons we want to achieve. So I came here for a visit Dr. Francois Eid who invented no-touch technique. I wanted to see how he do the surgery and I want to learn how he does it. My name is uh, Francois Eid. I'm a urologist, uh, director of advanced urological care a practice that is entirely focused on the treatment of advanced erectile dysfunction with penile implants. For many, many years we had an infection rate of about 2 to 5 percent and we uh, uh, were very frustrated because infections uh, would happen even if everything was perfect you would get an infection. So it was almost like playing Russian roulette. Around uh, 2003 uh, we began looking at what were the organisms that infected uh, the, these implants. And we discovered that it was, most of the organisms were from the patient's skin. And it was very difficult to sterilize the patient's skin. And uh, so I, I, I decided that I would do the implant without touching the skin. Uh, it wasn't there before, he invented it. But why? To reduce the infection rate. Essentially, we do the surgery without touching the skin. So neither the instruments, the penile implant or the gloves touch the skin. In that fashion, we reduce the infection rate to 0.5%, and that's based on uh, over 3,700 patients since uh, 2006, so for, the, for uh, about 11 years. So Dr. Yi's e, uh, surgery, uh, his no-touch technique is very notably uh, very impressive because his infection is by far the lowest among all the other you know, literature has been shown? Well, that's actually the best question uh, that you can ask me, you know, because uh, uh, many patients assume that if you get an infection, you can just give me antibiotic and the infection will go away. And, and it's not, unfortunately, that doesn't happen with penile implants. When there is an infection, you have to take the implant out and then there's nothing in the penis and then the penis will scar down and prevent uh, from doing a penile implant uh, the, the, the nice way later on. It's possible, it's a lot more difficult, and the penis will be a lot smaller. Uh, so the infection doesn't kill the patient, but the infection will permanently damage the penis. Penile prosthetic surgery is not for life or death, but it's for patient satisfaction, actually. I would say patient happiness. Necessarily, they didn't have to do it, but they chose it to make their lives better, but still they had a complication. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of burden. So to prevent the infection, uh, actually it's the, you know, for the better patient care and the, for the better patient uh, management. You know, many patients uh, who have erectile dysfunction uh, don't respond to medications and they want a penile implant. Uh, but they're very scared, they're very nervous, and one of the uh, reasons that they're uh, scared is the possibility of an infection. So it's a very serious uh, a problem and we want to make sure we minimize this for the patient. 
And uh, I truly believe that a good surgeon uh, should always think of the best of the patient, not himself. Like this, uh, his surgery, you know, a no touch taker will, will take a more time and more energies, but still, this surgery is not for the surgeon, but for the patient. He made it very clear that the, uh, we surgeons should serve the patient. So uh, I do agree with his philosophy of how to be a good surgeon and being a good doctor. So actually, it's a pilgrimage for myself, uh, endless pilgrimage. So being a surgeon is a kind of, you know, my lifelong job is a learning. Every day, there's a new techniques developing. And all the other surgeons are doing a, their surgery one or the other ways. I can always learn better, and I can always see how they do it. So there's a new surgeons coming. At the same time, there are a whole lot of you know, great surgeons out there I want to see. Uh, Dr. Park also uh, uh, is extremely interested in, uh, in instructing and teaching patients and providing information, and he has uh, really great uh, videos of his surgery. Uh, that uh, people can look at, which uh, I recommend uh, to all men before they're having a penile implant. As a matter of fact, some doctors also look at the videos to learn how to do the surgery from him. Learning is not just, you know, learn from the others, but while you give a learning to the others, let's say I'm training others, it's a good learning chance for you as well, because you have to see your surgery objectively. You have to tell your ideas exactly with the word while doing so, you kind of uh, categorize and the reasoning and all those stuffs happening in your own, in my own head, and it actually made me recognize more about my surgery. Now, what's uh, greater about him is his uh, complete philosophy about the uh, way he treats and handle patients, uh, and that uh, he has an extreme uh, good judgment and experience uh, to bring. Uh, when performing uh, an operation on a patient. Uh, I think those are important qu uh, qualities to have um, when you're a doctor and you uh, treat a patient. Uh, so I think his philosophy is outstanding and uh, uh, his t combined with his technical skills and good judgment makes for a formidable doctor.